Hi everyone, this is Jackie from Project Piaba. I just wanted to show you some of the habitat where the people who fish for wild-caught fish that are sold in the aquarium industry are doing their work. So this is an area of the flooded forest near the village of Daraqua. There are not very many people who live in that village, but those that do make their living in harmony with nature here fishing for aquarium fish. They also do some peacock bass fishing and some other ways of augmenting their income because the aquarium fish industry is not as lucrative as it was decades ago. And that's something that, that Project Piaba and some of the fishermen's cooperatives are trying to work on to remedy to make this fishery more competitive in, uh, in a global market where you can purchase your fish from anywhere. But remember, only the fish that are wild caught from the Rio Negro have the added environmental benefit of sending the money that you're spending on your fish back to these biologically important areas like the Rio Negro. So when you purchase your fish from the Rio Negro, you are paying into that supply chain that is allowing people to live in harmony with nature here instead of doing destructive forestry practices, destructive um, mining practices, all kinds of other things, urban migration, because these people have been living here for generations and fishing the way that their families have fished for generations, so it's really important to them to be able to live in harmony with nature, but it's not always possible. So uh, some of the things that we are doing are trying to foster this fishery. Again, we don't buy the fish, we don't sell the fish, we don't capture the fish, but what we do is we try to support these communities and these fishermen who are doing this for a living. So uh, I just wanted to show you this habitat a little bit. This is uh, a part of the flooded forest here, and you can see I'm, I hope that the camera will pick it up. I've been standing very still for a long time trying to get, get everybody to come back to me. Uh, but there are lots of schools of fish just right here. This water is like a little bit more than ankle deep. And it is full of all kinds of, whoa, I just scared them. All kinds of fish. I saw cardinal tetras. There's hemigramus, which are like gold line tetras and a bunch of other species that are hard to identify in a situation like this. I'm going to see if I can dip this in the water and show you. There's a cardinal, a whole bunch of cardinals over there. Also some diprosis, uh, which are a dwarf cichlid. And a lot of these species of fish are very suitable for aquariums because they're small, they don't grow to be very large, they're not particularly aggressive with each other, and they have these cool schooling behaviors that they're fascinating to look at, not to mention beautiful. So, oh, here's a school of cardinal tetras. I'm hoping you'll be able to see them. So cool. And um, something that I that I don't have the uh, water quality equipment with me, but we have a team of vets who are here who are looking at parasites and diseases and stuff like that in the wild fish that they're catching so that they can then compare that to the fish after they've gone through that supply chain and see how the best handling practices are improving the health of the fish, which anecdotally, anecdotally we think that they are. We're seeing better quality fish coming into the United States when people are importing them and purchasing them. So that's a really cool thing. That's a really important part of our work is fostering those best handling practices and allowing the fish themselves to be competitive quality wise with fish that are produced elsewhere in the world. So that's a really neat thing to do. But uh, along with that work, they're actually taking water quality samples. And one of the things that they're finding is that most of these areas have a pH of like 4.9, which, you know, if you think, if you keep fish at home, you're like, ooh, right, 4.9, they're swimming in acid. And they are, but that's what these fish are adapted to. So another thing that's important is, is conditioning the fish because you don't want to have your tank at home at a pH of of seven and then take these fish that have lived their entire lives at a pH of 4.9. So another thing that we're working on is uh, helping the people throughout the supply chain to acclimate fish and to understand a little bit about how their biology uh, can be 
used to, to improve their health, right? So they're in that acid water, but you can acclimate them and get them used to different conditions. And you don't want to just move them like from that acid water into a neutral pH and then back into acid water. If you take them home and go, well, they're black water, they come from a low pH environment. And then you've just moved them from where they were acclimated and their shipping water was very different. So you have to really think about what the fish have gone through at each point of the supply chain. So that's, that's one thing that we work on here too. And I just, I am blown away by how incredible this habitat looks. So behind me, you can see this is flooded forest. So in the, in the rainy season, this is all underwater and it's just trees and jungle submerged and the fish have all that habitat. But then when the water level goes down, you end up with these fish trapped in these little, little puddly areas here. And, you know, if you've ever um, thought about fish and, and how much water they need, and oh my gosh, there goes a really cool cichlid. The camera's not gonna pick it up. Oh no, you, you're just gonna have to trust me, he's cool. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to share this with you and talk a little bit about our work. Thanks for following along.